Welcome to Health Professional Radio. This is Diane Grace, and joining us today is the Executive Manager, Media, and Spokesperson at the Cancer Council Queensland. Let us welcome Katie Clift. Thanks for having me, Diane. Great to be here. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to talk to you today. Katie, can you give us more information about what does Cancer Council does? And who does it? Who does benefit from it? Yes, yeah, so the Cancer Council exists for all Queenslanders who are, are affected by all cancers. Uh, we have one in two Queenslanders diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime, and more than 26,000 people who will be diagnosed this year alone. Um, so we focus on the entire spectrum of cancer, from people uh, helping them to prevent cancer through to when they're diagnosed and the journey of treatment and that diagnosis and then survivorship. And we do cover all Queenslanders and all cancers. I think some people think we just focus on the main common cancers. They see a lot of that in the media, uh, but we do uh, exist to help all people effectively treat, prevent, and, and survive a cancer diagnosis. Well, that's definitely great news, especially for uh, the better treatment of cancer. Um, is there any new research in particular that um, Cancer Council of Queensland has been uh, doing recently? Uh, there's so much new research that's being undertaken all the time. We have um, so many uh, research grants that we invest in externally. So we uh, go to organisations like QUT, UQ, QIMR and invest in some of the wonderful laboratory work uh, and different analytical work that they're doing in those um, institutions every year. We're able to do that through uh, people who fund our work and the uh, Queenslanders who so generously give towards uh, what we do through fundraising efforts and campaigns every year. And then we've got an in-house research team of epidemiologists. So they um, analyse the Queensland Cancer Registry data. So we always have new research that's coming out um, on all types of cancers. And particularly what we're looking at at the moment is we're spearheading um, work into a national cancer atlas. So a few years ago we did a Queensland Cancer Atlas that mapped out the geographic uh, in, in, inequities uh, between people diagnosed in metro areas and regional parts of the state and now we want to take that process to, to all of Australia. So definitely our researchers are very, very busy. Wow, it's good to know that um, you never stop conducting research and looking for better ways and it's also good news that the government is not stopping well, um, showing support uh, through funding. Also, uh, it's good to know that you are helping those cancer survivors uh, navigate through life and and help them return to their normal lives and get back to work. Um, could you expound more uh, about your other uh, patient support services? Yeah, so people would well know 131120, which is our cancer information and support line. Um, really, that's the first point of contact for anybody who's got any question about any cancer. So whether you're diagnosed yourself or you're a friend or family member or a carer of somebody who's been diagnosed, 131120, we've got uh, health nurses and registered health professionals there to take your call and speak with you about your experience and answer questions. And we've also got a cancer counselling service that we offer statewide. Um, it's offered at no out-of-pocket cost for people who need um, to access that service and it's referred through 131120 and they're registered uh, psychologists. So it's wonderful that we're able to provide that incredible service that we know so many people need, you know, to talk about their experiences. As I said, whether you yourself have been diagnosed or you're a carer, maybe you can do a counselling session together. Um, and we offer that face-to-face -face and over the phone um, across the state. So those are just some of the services. We've got a whole range of peer support services, different support groups. Um, and ways to connect with people beyond that as well. But definitely 13, 11, 20 is the, the first place to go in terms of accessing more support. If you've just joined us, I'm in conversation with Katie Cliff um, from the Cancer Council Queensland, and she's here talking about the various patient support services that they have um, and more information about research and better treatment for cancer. Um, Katie. As you know, most of our audience are from aged care, or most of them are health professionals. What do you want them to take away from having heard you today? 
Well, first of all, for health professionals, we have a really strong health professional network that we communicate with on a regular basis in terms of our new research or new services uh, and programs that would fit professions. Um, so it's always worth people getting in touch with us so they can be a part of that network um, via 131120 or at our website, which is cancerqld. Dot .org.au. It's really important to be a part of that network and it's important for us to reach out to GPs and those health professionals working on the ground so that they know our support services are out there and they can refer their patients directly to Cancer Council. So that would be the main message that we would want to get out today um, is that we're here, we have a great network that's already operating um, and we would love to extend our services to as many Queenslanders as can benefit from them. Um, so we would love for people to get in touch with us check out our website, find out more details and help us to reach people who are in great need of, of cancer support and help. Thank you so much, Katie, for joining us today. It's been our pleasure. Again, the website is cancerqld.org.au and their hotline is 131120. If you just missed our conversation, we have a transcript on our archive. You can visit us at hpr.fm and... You can also listen to it via SoundCloud. Thank you so much. You're listening to Health Professional Radio.